guys, we got more stuff. We got more stuff. So the boxes keep coming in, which I'm happy about actually. Uh, today it's mostly some tools that I needed to replace, a couple uh, longer extensions and some swivels that I, I couldn't find my, my old swivels, so I needed some swivels. Uh, but there is one part, uh, there is one part that I want to show you uh, later on at the toward the end of this video that we'll be uh, installing in the in the very near future. But today I really just wanted to um, give a, a quick overview or a review of this 1320 Performance Y-Pipe. I just uploaded the video of that installation uh, a couple of days ago, but through the sorcery and the, the wizardry of YouTube um, time manipulation, um, it was actually uh, almost over a week ago that I installed that Y-Pipe, so I think it's a good, it's good timing to uh, do a quick review of that. Um, just kind of give a quick rundown again of how the installation went, um, but also, uh, was it worth it? Um, did I even notice anything about uh, performance or sound or anything of that nature um, after the installation was done? So I want to talk about that. Um, you might be surprised, so uh, stay tuned. But first of all, thank you very much for stopping back to the channel. And if you're new to the channel, thank you for visiting. Please hit the subscribe button right now uh, so you can stay up to date on all the stuff I got going on. A lot, a lot of stuff happening over the next several weeks and over the next several months, so you don't want to miss it. And again, thank you very much. So. Let's get right into the review. So if you haven't seen that video yet, that recent video uh, of the installation, go ahead and check it out. But um, while you're here, this is what we replaced, the stock Y-pipe. Uh, why did we even replace it? Um, the purpose of doing exhaust work, obviously, is to get the exhaust to flow th out of the engine and out the back of the tailpipes as efficiently as possible. Um, most cars come from the factory with a pretty restrictive exhaust system. So opening up the diameter of the pipe, um, reducing bottlenecks or eliminating bottlenecks um, help the car more efficiently uh, exhaust those gases out of the system, um, in turn freeing up some horsepower or allowing the engine to make um, more of the horsepower that it was, uh, you know, uh, rated at as it left the factory. So. Uh, that's what we did. So just take a look at this. The collector portion of the stock pipe is about less than two and a half inches, or right at two and a half inches. Uh, so pretty small when, when you're considering two um, sides of the exhaust coming into it. Each of the individual branches were uh, under two inches. I think it was like one and three quarter inch, if I remember correctly, on both sides. So very, very restrictive. Um, the new pipe is two and a half inches um, on the branches and three inches at the collector, so a significant increase in uh, flow. So that obviously uh, was going to change the tone of the vehicle, which we'll talk about in just a minute, um, but it's also going to free up some of that airflow, which is, which is the goal, and it's going to help us make uh, more horsepower down the road. Uh, did it increase horsepower now as the car sits? We'll talk about that later on in the video as well, so stick around. This stock pipe also has a heat shield on it. We did wrap the 1320 Performance Y pipe with exhaust wrap because I did know that we were eliminating this heat shield, uh, which obviously prevents heat from making its way up into the cabin and burning your feet. Um, so that's why, again, when one of the reasons I wanted to wrap the exhaust, uh, just to prevent that heat transfer from the chassis and into the cabin of the vehicle. Um, if you've ever installed aftermarket exhaust systems with no heat shields, you know it gets quite warm down by your feet, especially during the winter months. So uh, I wanted to help prevent that as much as possible, which it did do. I noticed that it still gets a little bit warm, but nowhere near as warm as some of these other systems that I've uh, experienced in the past with no heat wrap and no heat shield. The other reason we wrapped the exhaust is because uh, the hotter the exhaust um, fumes, the exhaust gases are the faster they move the higher velocity they're moving at uh, out of the car so we want to keep that velocity up um, so keeping that heat in the exhaust pipes is going to help it move faster and more efficiently out of the exhaust pipe so again probably not something we can measure in terms of performance or how it contributes to performance but the whole goal is to get those exhaust gases uh, actually just in general to get air to flow into the engine and out the exhaust system as efficiently as possible. So adding that heat wrap is just going to um, help the car do that. So let's go for it now. Let's actually talk about um, the Y-pipe itself. Um, as I said in the previous video, uh, to wrap it up, 
the installation was, was quite simple. Um, definitely a one person job. Um, you can definitely do it from ramps or jack stands. Um, it's a little tight underneath there, but it is doable. Um, the Y-Pipe from 1320 Performance lined up very nicely. Uh, the hardware fit perfectly, the gaskets fit perfectly. Uh, there's no exhaust leaks. Uh, after about 20 or 30 miles, I did get back under there and, and make sure the bolts were still tight um, or tighten them a little further if I could. Um, and after a week or so, there's still no exhaust leaks and everything is good. No rattles, no weird noises. Um, so I couldn't be more happy uh, with 1320 Performance uh, Y-Pipe in terms of that. Did it change how the car sound? Yes, uh, absolutely. It's not louder, um, but the tone is definitely lower, um, throatier, more deep, um, which I was pleased with. Um, that's really all I was, I was expecting from this. My expectations in terms of performance were really low because I still have the stock catalytic converters on. Those damn test pipes are quite difficult uh, to install if you don't have a lift. So I'm looking for a, a, a shop that will allow me to do the work or a friend in the area that has a lift. Uh, so if you got one and you're near Greenville, let me know. Uh, uh, you just need uh, some more leverage to, to break those bolts loose. They're, they're pretty tight. So um, you need to be able to get a, you know, a, a, a ratchet wrench with a significantly longer handle. Uh, so that's what we're looking with or working with. But uh, like I said, um, the stock catalytic converters are still there. So there's still quite a bottleneck. Um, so I wasn't expecting a lot in terms of performance, but I want to still talk about the tone a little bit. It is deeper, uh, it is throatier, uh, especially in cold start. You can definitely tell uh, that we've made some changes to the exhaust system. Um, but as it idles down to its normal idle RPM range, uh, you can't really tell. It may be a little bit of a deeper rumble, but certainly not louder. Um, but under uh, hard acceleration is when you can really notice it. Uh, it's got a very, very nice note now. Um, and when it uh, shifts to the next gear, it has an extra little little grit, like a little uh, as it goes into the next gear. I'm not a beatboxer, so I can't do the noise for you, but you can definitely uh, tell as it shifts to the next gear um, that we got something different going on, which I really like. Now the moment or the bit of information you've all been waiting for, did it change performance? I would say that I was actually pleasantly surprised. Um, I tried to calm myself down. Everyone uh, seems to go that way when they install a performance part um, and they drive it. They're looking for any little extra oomph, a little uh, extra change in noise or this or that. Um, and you automatically feel like, yeah, it changed performance, it changed performance. So I told myself, don't, don't think like that. Uh, try to be as objective as possible and really observe. But I was actually surprised the car seemed like a totally different car. I'm being honest, it's hard to believe, but I'm, I'm being serious. I could definitely feel a little extra grunt, especially at low end. Um, it just seemed to pull a little bit harder, which I was uh, actually surprised about, like I said. Um, and at top end, uh, it seemed to be a little more effortless. It was making, the power seemed to be more effortless up around that 5,000, 5,500 into the 6,000 RPM range, uh, which really, really surprised me. Uh, if you've driven these cars in stock form, they do pull um, to redline, which is awesome, uh, to 7,500 RPM. Uh, but you can tell in that 6,500, 7,000 RPM range, it starts to really, uh, although it's making power, it seems to be working really hard at it. Um, it seems like that was eliminated with this Y-pipe. Um, and despite the fact that there's still uh, the stock catalytic converters on, um, it really pulls hard at top end. Um, and it's a definite difference. You can certainly tell it. But like I said, what I could really tell was at the low end, um, the power or the torque, the extra torque that it was making. Um, you know, you can certainly leave stop lights or stop signs with these cars and spin the tires. Um, that's no issue in stock form. Um, but something that has never happened is leaving a stop sign at wide open throttle, hitting second gear, and chirping the tires again. That's something that uh, I've never experienced with this car um, and honestly didn't know if it would ever happen just because of how this seven speed automatic transmission works and kind of the delay and you know all of that. Um, but I did it once from a stop sign and it surprising me thinking oh, it must have been a fluke. I hit some gravel or you know, there's a little bit of wet pavement. Um, I tried it again and both in manual mode and automatic mode. Um, I'll admit it was going around a, a slight curve right after the, it wasn't a turn and it wasn't a 90 degree curve, but it, there was a slight curve. So there could have been some weight transfer. 
um, and traction control was off. Um, but hitting second gear in both automatic and manual mode, it chirped the tires. It, not, not a tire spin, I wasn't burning second gear, um, but I could definitely hear the tires breaking loose, which is awesome. And I think that is evidence that this Y-Pipe from 1320 Performance actually works. It's just even more exciting to know that I'm going to be coupling it with some uh, resonated test pipes and a tune later on, and hopefully a, a little bit of a custom mid-pipe, which I'll talk about in a later video. Um, starting to uh, compile, compile some components uh, for that setup, so stay tuned for that. But um, yeah, with the tune and these test pipes, uh, knowing that it already opened up a little bit of torque and horsepower uh, just by installing this Y pipe, uh, that gives me a good feeling. So overall, very pleased. 1320 Performance seems to make a good product. Uh, we'll see how it holds up uh, over the next several months, but so far so good. Uh, and installed very nice. Only $170, $175 is listed out on eBay, but you know, they have an option to make an offer. Go ahead and make an offer, see what you can get. Um, I'll leave a link, a description, a link in the description below to this pipe. Uh, but overall, I would definitely recommend it. Uh, it fits great, sounds really nice, does open up a little bit of horsepower. Um, no check engine light or anything like that. It's all downstream, it's all beyond the, the O2 sensor, so you shouldn't have to worry about anything like that. And, uh, you know, I was worried about losing some horsepower, losing some torque. Some people talked about after they installed their, um, their muffler deletes that they lost a little low-end um, torque or something like that. But um, there was no issues with that whatsoever. It actually improved performance from what I could tell. So very pleased. Go get you one. You won't be disappointed. Uh, let's take a look at what some of these boxes had. I, I just don't have any patience. So if you're having any trouble reaching a nut or bolt, Get you some really long extensions. <laughs> That's one thing we got. I needed a little extra reach. Uh, if there's a bolt now that needs to be turned, I can get it. We got the strut tower brace from Megan Racing. These are not scratches, it's just little scuffs on the, on the uh, plastic cover, plastic uh, wrap that's on it right now. It's pretty sharp looking, and I know I went with Megan Racing on, on this one. Um, it's not a strut tower brace. I just didn't like the round, the round bar, um, and I don't like red. Um, like I said in a previous video, I like the engine beta to be clean and kind of subtle. Um, so, you know, black, silver, polished, aluminum, whatever the case may be, that's kind of more of the, the look, more of my style. So I had to go with Megan Racing. Um, I've heard it actually uh, fits a little better and maybe is a little uh, actually more effective than the other uh, brand as well. So that's why I decided to go with this one. All right, guys, that's it for today. Didn't want to make it too long. Just wanted to kind of give you a heads up and let you know how uh, this pipe is performing. So far, so good. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Um, if it, again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and do it. A lot of good stuff coming up. Look forward to seeing you in the next video. Have a good one.